It's Cascadian, it's dark, it's generously hopped. Today we're drinking Black Eagle Black IPA. Hey guys, it's Jim here with another episode of Beers at the British Isles. On today's episode, we're drinking Black Eagle Black IPA from Brew York Brewery. Now, this is another one of those where the uh, Beer 52 boxes just keep showing up at my house uh, by order of my girlfriend, nothing to do with me. Uh, so I thought I'd fish this one out today as I hadn't done a Black IPA uh, on the channel before. Uh, so something a little bit new. Uh, so whilst I got this from Beer52, this is available to buy from Brew York themselves on their website. Um, that's often a better way to buy beers uh, rather than heading out to the supermarket. Anyway, if you can, uh, the breweries enjoy that more, I, I think. So, uh, Black Eagle. Uh, when, I, when I first saw it, I kind of raised a wry smile like a oh, Black Eagle, uh, original name. Uh, but they also have a beer called Big Eagle, uh, which uh, is an IPA, and this is a, a black IPA. So, um, you know, I eat humble pie on that one. Uh, it's Black Black Eagle. It's 5.8%, and like I say, like I've probably said nine times or so now, it is a black IPA. What is a black IPA? Well, in short, black IPA was a fad that tried to take off and didn't quite. Uh, I took, back, back in the day, I mean, when will it have been, like 2017, 2018, thereabouts, uh, I took one look at Black IPAs and thought, that's not for me. I'm just not even going to bother with that. I'm not going to get involved in it in any way. Um, this will pass as quickly as White Stout did. Um, and in many respects, it did. But the difference there is, I think, unjustly so, because since then, since Black IPA sort of died, I've had a few examples that have just, they've all been absolutely beautiful. So at its best, a black IPA is sort of this, this tropical, piney, uh, kind of bready IPA with a real just undercurrent of sweet roastiness um, that kind of encapsulates it all. Um, so at its best, it's that. At its worst, it's a stout that somebody put too many hops in. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the the tightrope you walk in here with a black IPA. I mean, it's basically what it says in the tin. It's an IPA that's that's dark in colour. Um, that being said, I don't have any grist information on this beer. Um, what I'm imagining is they've put if if it is kind of if they are trying to stick to this uh, Big Eagle uh, kind of template that they've got and just make it a, a seasonal release. You know, this is the uh, this is the 2020 version, and a uh, very nice can it is too. Um, this is a 2020 version, it's a seasonal release, a special edition. Um, so if they are trying to stick to that template, I'm imagining they've, they've, they've basically put roasted barley in there. And there, there are two reasons for that. One is that roasted barley um, can, can impart a lot of color with a very small amount of it. So if you do want to turn, turn a beer black, you can just put a little bit of roasted barley in there and it will go very dark very quickly. Uh, the second is that uh, roasted barley gives a real sort of astringent, roasty, almost like an acrid bitterness to it. Um, and that sits quite well in a black IPA because, because we know that IPA is a bitter already. Um, so that kind of, kind of charred, burnt, roasted flavor sits quite well within an IPA. So imagine there's roasted barley in there. Um, again, if I'm right, let me know. If I'm wrong, uh, please don't. Uh, Bob, please don't tell anybody else. Um, the hops, however, as always, uh, all singing, all dancing, hop profile, uh, they've included that. Uh, firstly, they say it's double hopped, or generously hopped. Generously hopped both in the kettle and in the fermenter, which means that it's dry hopped. Um, I don't know why they didn't just say it. I mean, they say it on the can, but you online they, they don't mention dry hopping at all. Um, that's what it is. I guess maybe that's as a net to draw people in. I don't know. 
uh, but we've got the three C's. We've got Col uh, Cascade, Centennial, and Chinook. Um, almost fell into my own trap there. As earlier, I was wondering whether Columbus was one of the three C's. It's not one of my three C's, but maybe it's one of somebody else's three C's. Maybe it's one of the four C's. Let's 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 say that. Um, so those are some three real big hitter hops there. Uh, you're expecting like a tropical grapefruity flavor with like a, a resiny pine character. Um, so this is shaping up to be a pretty good beer. Um, just off the hot profile and the fact that it's a black IPA alone, I'm already very interested. So let's dig in. Okay, we're in the glass, we're nice and cold. We've got a lovely off-white head uh, floating on top of the beer. Um, yeah, so this is a dark beer, uh, but I've, I've cooled it down just because I want to I want to keep all that carbonation where it is. I, I, I don't want to lose any of the carbonation in, in this instance because it is still an IPA at the end of the day. So I, st I still want to get that kind of biting, carbonated, bitter kind of feel going on in my mouth. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Um, first impressions are actually, um, of course, you guys will see this completely differently and disagree, uh, but it's not actually that dark. I, it's, it's not black, it's kind of like a, a brown. So, I mean, that doesn't really tell me whether I was right or wrong about my roasted barley comments. Um, but, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it's not so dark, which maybe means it's not such a, maybe it's just gonna be an IPA and with a bit of color in it, uh, like maybe I suspected. Let's have a, a sniff. Okay, yep. Yeah. So the, it's all hops in the aroma, as, as it should be. I mean, this is, it's dark, but it is still an IPA, remember? So those hops, those three wonderful hops that all begin with the same letter are really, really working here, so. Yeah, so the first thing that hits you is that kind of just the, the tropical burst. Um, and then when you when you pick that apart, you've sort of, you've, it, it's basically a pineapple, I, th I think is, is the aroma here. It, it's kind of difficult to, difficult to pick apart, but I would say, yeah, it's a very pineapple-y, perhaps a touch of mango in there, but mainly pineapple. So let's... Uh, Ooh, wow, it's very bitter. It's very bitter, but after the bitterness fades, you get a lovely silky uh, chocolatey flavor just following the bitterness down. Um, it is very bitter though. But on top of that bitterness, um, on top of that bitterness, before the chocolatiness hits you, um, you you get all the, you know you get those all all singing, all dancing, all same initialed hops, just floating through your nose. So, so like I said earlier, the pine, the grapefruit, uh, it's it's all there. That that the touch of pineapple that that kind of just flows through. It's it's pretty great. I mean, um, if I were critical, I would say that it's a little bit too bitter for me, um, but but this is a black IPA after all, and not just a Westie. Brew York, the uh, city that never sleeps. Um, obviously not, not New York, Brew York. Uh, the people behind this fine black IPA. Um, Started by two friends uh, back in 2015. Two friends that met on a stag do and realized that they both both like beer. So they set up a brewery within the city walls of York. Um, if you've been to York, I guess that, that'll mean something to you. I've been to York uh, several times. They have a good beer festival there once a year. Uh, so that's what I know York for. Uh, this is one of only two breweries inside the city walls and I just, I get the feeling that these guys really, really love the fact that, they, that they're in York, they come from York, 
And I always like that. I always, I always commend people who um, are proud of their heritage. And these guys are even proud of their Viking heritage. Uh, so a couple of their beers are named after, um, you know, Viking things. Um, I can't think of any right now. Um, but like the, the designs, kind of the, the weird sort of um, jagged designs uh, kind of remind me of, of Viking artwork. I don't know why, uh, it just does. It kind of like the, the artwork almost kind of looks like if you've seen Thor Ragnarok, um, one of the best Marvel films out there in my opinion. Um, kind of looks like the little cartoons that they play at the end credits, uh, you know, so it's kind of the jagged geometry of those shapes is, is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, they seem like a good brew. Uh, I'm not super familiar with them myself, um, but people seem to really like them. And um, and I like the fact that they back themselves. I like the fact that they're, they're founded by home brewers um, and the fact that they're proud of where they are and where they come from. Okay then, let's wrap this up. Let's um, let's see what I think of this black IPA. Uh, and to be honest, this is probably going to be one of very few black IPAs that I try because they really are quite rare. Like I say, the the style sort of died a few years ago, so it's always really nice to see um, to see just a few uh, coming out. Um, so I guess at the end, when I say head down to your local bottle shop, if there is one definitely grab one, whether I recommend this or not. Um, it's just my uh, my preface there. Uh, okay, so, so I mean, this looks like a black, you know, like something that you would describe as black, fine. It's got that off-white head that I always like to see uh, with the darker beers. Yeah, the, the aroma's very, very IPA-y. Um, yeah, like I say, it, it's basically uh, pineapple with a touch of pine in it as well, but no apple. Um, so mainly pineapple on the nose, um, touch of pine. Yeah, the flavor, I've kind of got used to the bitterness now, but it is, it is still very, very bitter. It's that kind of bitterness that sort of, uh, just clings to the back of your throat. Um, like I said, the, the hops are lovely though. You, I mean, you can't go wrong with those with those three hops, Chinook, Centennial, and Cascade. Uh, they're, they're so kind of delicate. I mean, Chinook less so, but but uh, the other two, Centennial and Cascade, are just are just so delicate and delicious that you know the the, the grapefruit, pineapple, pine notes that, that just that just flow through your through your, the back of your throat. If you know it, it's 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 a good it's a good IPA. It's a good IPA. So. Um, so what I'm going to, I'm going to rate this and I'm going to rate it, um, as a black IPA and what I'm going to, basically the question I'm asking myself as I rate it is, uh, should they have bothered making a black IPA in a world that clearly doesn't want black IPAs? Although people do seem to really like them. I guess maybe because they're a bit of a novelty. Um, I mean, I really like them. I, I will say I, I, if I ever see a black IPA, I will always buy one and I suggest you do the same. Um, for me, this one's a little bit. Uh, too bitter. It's not balanced, and, and with a black IP, you really need to, to balance it. Um, I feel like the malt profile of this um, isn't as good as the malt profile of, say, a West Coast IPA would probably be. Anyway, uh, this is a West Coast style black IPA. Um, you know, there's. There's no crispness, which is fine. That that's kind of IPA territory. But here, there's there's no sweetness. It's it's all bitterness, and it's all like I say. I think that that roasted barley, if it is in there, um, is working a little bit too hard, and it's 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 making it it's bordering on on unpleasant. And and I don't I don't mean unpleasant because it's bad. I mean unpleasant because you can't enjoy the the, the rest of the, of the of the pieces, the accoutrement that make up this beer. Um, so for me, on a naught to 10, this beer is a, a five. You know, it has, it has a really good hot profile. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty easy, easy drinker and, and, and pretty boozy, uh, but it's gonna be a five. 
That being said, what do I know? Maybe this is your next favorite beer. So you should definitely still head over to, to the Brew York website, uh, maybe even order a box of uh, Beer 52. Um, I don't have a, a promo code or anything like that, like uh, some uh, podcasts and, and, and YouTube channels do for Beer 52. Um, but head over there, buy a box if you want. Um, you can even buy singles on there too. So, so maybe, maybe try your, your hand at one of these. And um, as you do, Stick on the song Eagle by Cat Empire, and I don't think that needs any explanation, Black Eagle, Eagle. Um, it's a, such a, it's a lovely song, and uh, maybe if I was listening to that as I drank it, I would uh, appreciate this a little bit more. Um, but do guys, like I say, whether you buy this beer or not, and I, I think that you still should buy it and support the guys over at Brew York, um, whether you buy this beer or not, still do keep an eye out for Black IPAs. It's, it's a very rare style um, nowadays, but they're often very, very good. Until then guys, cheers.